which is a fairly rare thing, it's fairly new to the, to the lower dock. Uh, we do see some pike once in a while, but we see very low uh, numbers of sport fish, and that's largely because if you look along the shoreline, there's not much in the way of habitat. Fish like places to hide, places to feed, things to spawn on. So you see concrete walls, a sheet pile, uh, and the bottom of the river is routinely dredged to pr uh, pr provide uh, fish and flood storage. So the physical habitat for fish is very poor in this area. And it's not much better as you turn the corner and start uh, area here that's all paved. And the reason we have that is because we need a, a good space for working. There's 450 tons of debris, like in that pile of orders over there, that comes down the dawn every year. The great that something is cut away to, that's a million pounds of moving from the twigs to the branches to pull stuff that's in the stomach. There's some stumps over there that are actually one to two feet wide. And that's not a big stump that comes down the river. We put a series of booms here at the bottom of the channel to catch that because we don't want that to go on the harbor. We have a lot of recreational motors in the harbor, but they have political traffic. So for safety and navigation, it is all by the city of Toronto. It's operated by the Toronto Port Authority. Answer any questions in time. They're actually uh, skimmers, so they're designed to go out and skim the top layer for small um, uh, debris like coffee cups or more human litter. And they're actually owned by the City of Toronto, and they were uh, leased. No, they, they were leased by the City of Toronto this year, and they were. And the city asked how to operate this year on trial basis to see how effective they were. We're always in the exact right spot. Uh, one of the corporation's projects is uh, a park called Commissioner's Park, which is actually meant to line the south side of uh, the Keating Channel. Um, we did a design for it, I think, uh, coming up about two years ago now. We went through a quite an expensive uh, public process. It was designed by a, uh, park, a landscape architect from Montreal, uh, Claude Pommier. And it consists of a series of uh, active recreation ball fields, and then passive recreation planted areas, and it's kind of divided in half by Villiers Street, which is the street that you probably just walked up that is uh, just on the other side of these buildings. So south of Villiers to Commissioners is really the active recreation zone part of that park. And then from Villiers up to this edge is really conceived of as kind of a, a, a wetland component of the park that's meant to be part of the whole Don River uh, naturalization. So that, that section of the park is shown uh, with a design in the plan, but I think the thought has always been that it will become part of whatever this naturalized river edge is. So we'll have a part of the park that's a little more natural and then another part of the park that's a little more uh, active recreation oriented. The corporation is now starting to acquire some of the properties. Uh, many of the properties on the south side of Villiers are privately owned. So we're purchasing those and trying to assemble the whole park site. Once we have most or all of it assembled, we'll uh, actually start uh, building the park. Hopefully by then we'll also have a, a good plan for what we're doing with the water's edge so we can do that. That phase of the, of the surface about 450 tons of zero. There was that big storm that happened in 2005. Remember, up, up, up from the dawn from the valley flooded. That storm we removed 320 tons from that one storm. So that's the kind of storm event that has to go into the planet. Greenway is still uh, very much in the thinking of the whole project. We haven't gotten to the level of detail of your question, which is um, having to do with the bridges and the, and the, and the look and feel you know, and how the connection is going to work. We just haven't really shot that far yet. I think we're kind of waiting to see, but now that we have, in terms of reference for the dawn naturalization, we can probably start to engage in that, but we've been kind of holding off on, on, on getting into the design of that. Uh, the island, uh, the island uh, areas as well as on the top of the park, and they will move in and up the Don River as we've been seeing. We have uh, the salmon that are moving along the shorelines of the island, Tommy Thompson Park, and are then moving along this shoreline and heading upstream. So we certainly have uh, uh, connections that we have to both understand because what's happening in this area will affect the dawn. We have invasive species like round gobies that are now coming in that will affect what we can do in the dawn. So we have we have to consider all these things together. It's one big system that uh, we have to we have to understand it and have to work with it. Behind the freighter, you see the large white crane, that's Nava's crane. It has a capacity of 350 tons. 
It is the largest crane of its type in the Great Lakes. And one of the advantages we have of having a crane like that here is that we do something that's referred to as short sea shipping. As you've probably seen on TV, the Asian export market is huge, and they're shipping these, these giant boats with thousands of containers on them. But the thing is, they obviously can't come up the seaway because the seaway is limited to 78 feet wide and 740 feet long. So what we can do, though, is unload some of those containers in, in Montreal or in Halifax and then ship them up on, on small barges or something like that. So cranes like that will become important in the future. And the other thing, too, is that, just to let you know, shipping by water is the most economical, environmentally friendly way of transporting goods. And I'll, 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 I'll refer to that again when we get down to the uh, shipping channel. Now that the Dog River uh, process again is uh, in terms of reference phase, we'll start to look at some of the land east of Parliament Street, uh, including the extension of Queen's Key, which was asked about before, but also well, what happens on those lands. Uh, the silos that you see there are. Do the industrial uses down here cause pollution into the water? And I think you can see that they're covered, which prevents or reduces the amount of uh, water getting on top of them and then carrying the, the uh, materials into the water. Uh, certainly, management of the site in terms of, uh, of maintaining the uh, ability for the to inter interfere, inter intervene the water rather, keep it from running into the lake would be helpful. But I think they're seeing that they're doing uh, fairly good uh, practice with covering it all up. Yeah, you want to talk about really address specific solutions and things like that. That's really good to play, play out in that long range of it.
you can leave because they're a, a good uh, a good employer and a good or part of the part of the city. It smells, yeah, it smells nice. nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I shot the lawnmowers. <laughs> Are we in? We're coming. Uh, I think I can say everybody who's been uh, helping out with this has really enjoyed being with you today. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for getting the, getting to know this area better. We often find that once people come down and take a look around here, they understand it a completely different way, and they bring really creative suggestions to our processes. So thank you for being engaged today. Uh, Chris mentioned some other things that are coming up in terms of Lake Ontario Park. We uh, expect, and I think we mentioned that before, we're going to have our next public meeting on December 5th. Uh, if you signed in, you'll all get notices of that. And so we encourage you to be there. Uh, this really is the last leg of your tour. You started at Billiard Street, we walked south, then we went north. We appreciate your backtracking with us today because we had a few more folks than we had anticipated. So what we're going to do now is walk from here up to the Billiard Street where we started the, the day, maybe about four hours ago, I think. So thanks for hanging in. This is uh, about the center of the Don Greenway, which is one of the uh, options in terms of bringing the water from uh, the Don Dale, or part of the water. So we're going to walk up there. You're really free to wander from. You know, wander up with us, and then we'll walk the gate for the last little bit. And then uh, you can head to the boat. And thanks for the talk. They're very cute. <laughs> they look very warm, actually. They are warm. <laughs> and they keep my hair out of my face. <laughs> and they make people laugh. So That's I mean, right. yeah, multi-purpose, right? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. So how are you enjoying your new job? I'm enjoying it. Together all the morning at 7.30, but I better organize my thoughts. Of course, it doesn't really do any good once you're, you know. Yeah. Yeah. A pleasure. Great to meet you. I'm sure we'll see you at anything. Yeah. Add it to the pile. Here, I got one too. Okay, cool. We have done here. Okay. All right. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, I've said to me, if you walked out this morning, she says, gee, you took a bit. Hey, Thank you, Captain. Thank you. You're filming all this? Filming all this.